Let's talk about these VTP modes and we're going to see them in action or possibly in action as well. Because the thing is, these modes determine what a switch can and can't do in our domain. And one of them is a little odd sounding, especially if it's the first time you've heard of it. Server mode, though, is not odd sounding at all. In VTP mode, server mode, a switch can create VLANs, it can delete them, and it can modify them. And by modify them, frankly, what you'll be doing most of the time as far as modification goes is naming them. But you can do anything in VLAN database config mode. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that switch slip down a little bit here and nothing complicated here VLAN 100 which was already created I just went into VLAN config mode and that's it and let's run iOS help to see the many 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 commands that you can run here and frankly don't tell anybody I said this but you'll you'll probably never run most of these frankly the one that you're gonna run is name and that's just what I'll do here and let's say we're gonna call it accounting just give it a little more intuitive name and you leave and that's all there is to it we run show vlan brief and there is your name accounting much easier to remember and work with somebody looks oh yeah vlan 100 then they may not remember what vlan 372 is but if you say the accounting vlan or the math vlan or whatever name you give it uh you know you'll you'll be in good shape they'll know what you're talking about now let's verify that change and you can see again the beauty of vtp because I don't want to have to go to every other switch in the network and say, okay, i got to type the word accounting 29 times. Nobody wants to do that. So there you go. And there's VLAN 100 accounting, and we are all set. So when a device is in server mode, which is the default, you can create a VLAN, you can delete a VLAN, and you can modify a VLAN. And I'll just do a quick creation here. 120, drops you into config mode, but what I did there just creates the VLAN. And there it is, VLAN 120. We'll see it over on our other ones as well. We'll just look at switch two. And you can see right there on VLAN 120, and you know I'm gonna have to look at switch one too. Doesn't hurt. And there you go, so there's VLAN 120. So if I wanted to delete it, I simply do a no VLAN 120, nothing fancy. And you can see it's gone. Let's go ahead and verify. I knew I was going to get that wrong sooner or later. <laughs> and there it happened. So VLAN 120 is gone. So that's what a device in server mode can do. Create, delete, modify. Now, you can add ports to a VLAN in server, client, and transparent mode. So I want to make that very clear because people will hear the term modify and they'll think that includes adding ports to a VLAN and it's not. What you're doing is changing an attribute of the VLAN and you can do that in server mode. You can add ports to a VLAN in server, client, and transparent modes. Just one more rule, as you'd expect, you've got to have at least one VTP switch in any domain running in server mode or you couldn't create new VLANs or delete previously existing ones. You know, you just have a bunch of clients because if switches are running in VTP client mode, they cannot create a VLAN, they can't delete a VLAN, and they can't modify a VLAN. Pretty much what they're doing is listening for VTP advertisements and updating their databases appropriately when those come in. And let's see, we're on switch three. We'll just work with that one. I'll go ahead and make this a client and the command, just a quick reminder here, is that our command is VTP mode and we have four options, client, off, server, and transparent. So here we're gonna go with client. And you won't believe this, but there are actually options after that. We're not gonna get into those. And you get a little confirm that you've set it to VTP client mode. We will verify with show VTP status. And where is it? On this one, it's under Feature VLAN VTP Operating Mode, and there it is. So this device is a client. So we've been told we can't create a VLAN, we can't delete a VLAN, we can't modify a VLAN. Let's try it anyway. Let's see what happens. I want to create VLAN 175. And I can't do it. I'm not allowed to because I'm in client mode. Hmm. Well, let's see. What VLANs do we know about here? How many of these VLANs could I delete if I were in server mode? One. 
because you can't delete those default VLANs. Switch won't let you. But let's try, I'm in client mode. Let me try to get rid of VLAN 100. Can't do it because I'm in client mode. And let's say finally I just decide, you know what? I, I just want to give VLAN 100 a new name. I will go into VLAN 100 database mode, VLAN database mode, and no, you will not because you are a client. You really can't do anything except listen for ads when you're a client. That's just the way it is. Transparent mode, if this is the first time you've heard of it, it's going to sound very odd, but it's getting more and more popular out there. Uh, switches in VTP transparent mode are not fully participating in the VTP domain. What's actually, they don't even sync their databases with other VTP speakers in the same domain. They don't even advertise their own VLAN information. So you might be thinking, well, Chris, what do they do? Well, here's the deal. VLANs created on a transparent VTP switch, they're what we call locally significant only. I don't think that's a phrase we've used a great deal in this course at this point. So I want to bring it up now. It's exactly what it sounds like. You know, sometimes you make a change to a router or a switch and it gets advertised. Sometimes you make a change and it only matters to the local device. And this is one of those times. Again, if you're in transparent mode, um, you know, the VLANs you create, they're not advertised to other VTP speakers in the same domain. They are locally significant only. Now, when a, v when a transparent switch receives a VTP advertisement, here's the other oddity. It will ignore the ad, but it will forward them out its other trunks. When you get into much more advanced VTP study, this will become clear. Unfortunately, we have to stop here with the transparent switches because I know it's an odd sounding mode, uh, especially the first time you've heard of it. So I want to go over it one more time because client and server are so straightforward. VTP transparent switches don't sync their databases with other speakers in the same domain. They don't advertise their own information. Uh, when, they cr when you create a VLAN on a transparent VTP switch, it is locally significant only. It is not going to be advertised. And again, when a transparent switch receives the VTP ads, they are not rejected. They're ignored and forwarded. Big difference there. Speaking of straightforward, by golly, here's a straightforward one, off. <laughs> and uh, that is going to disable VTP, and the switch will not forward VTP advertisements. Just that simple. But again, client, server, mostly what you're going to run into in the real world, I would expect some mention of transparent mode on your exam in some form, though. But uh, as far as VTP goes, you know, those are the modes. And what we're going to discuss next in C in Action, we're going to talk a little bit more about this advertisement process and another value that we saw here in show VTP status. And it's an innocent little number. Here it is, configuration revision. And I know we've been focusing on other things, but the especially eagle-eyed among you, which is all my students, probably noticed that that number's been going up as we've been going around, you know, and doing different things and adding VLANs and trying to delete them and that kind of thing. We're going to talk about what's making that number tick and why it exists, and that is coming up next.